Welcome to the tutorial entitled Adult Education Reports, NRS Tables 1 through 3, 6, and 7. My name is Jeffrey Elmore, and I'm your host for this tutorial. This is the first of three tutorials on adult education reports. The second tutorial, coming in spring 2020, will cover NRS Tables 4, 4A, 4B, and 4C. The third tutorial, coming in late spring 2020, will cover NRS Tables 5, 5A, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and the statewide performance report. These NRS tables report post-exit indicator performance, also referred to as follow-up outcome attainment. Under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, state adult education agencies, or Title II agencies, are required to report on the performance of adult education activities delivered with WIOA state and local match funding. For Title II reporting, states must submit data in accordance with National Reporting System, or NRS tables. There are a total of 17 NRS tables. On this slide, the first 10 are listed. The tables we will focus on today are indicated with a check mark. Here are the remaining 7 NRS tables. Also listed are two new reports, the Statewide Performance Report, or SPR, and the Measurable Skill Gain, or MSG, report. All state agencies responsible for delivery of WIOA services under Titles 1, 2, 3, and 4 must report data using the SPR and MSG forms. The NRS tables, on the other hand, are unique to Title II. To optimize your understanding of the content presented in this tutorial, you should have a copy of your region's 2018-2019 NRS tables. If the region's NRS tables are unavailable, you can obtain blank versions of the NRS tables in Appendix E of the August 2019 edition of the NRS Technical Assistance Guide, located on the NRS webpage, www.nrsweb.org. Be sure to download the 2018-19 version and not the 2017-18 version, which is still available. A couple of terms you need to know for our discussion of NRS tables are participant and reportable individual. For the purposes of reporting, an adult student is counted as a participant if he or she has completed an ASPD and accumulated 12 or more contact hours in a period of participation, or POP. Some things to keep in mind about participants. A participant must be an eligible individual. No one under 16 is considered an eligible individual. No one 16 or 17 years old is considered an eligible individual without documentation releasing him or her from compulsory school attendance. No one with a secondary school diploma or recognized equivalent is considered an eligible individual unless he or she has pre-tested below the 12th grade level using any of the state approved assessments. An ASPD is considered complete when all required information is provided on the form and in SSWS. Contact hours may be any combination of in-person and distance learning attendance as long as the attendance is consistent with the delivery of adult education and literacy services in accordance with WIOA. A participant must have a valid assessment, which could be either a valid pretest or a valid post-test. The purpose of the assessment is for placement on NRS tables. A student who has a pretest with an ESL completer is not considered as having a valid result and must take a different pretest. If a participant is being rolled over from a previous year and the participant's last assessment result was ESL completer, the participant must take a new assessment. While the ESL completer result in this second case is considered valid for evaluating performance, it's not considered valid for placement on NRS tables. A POP may straddle two fiscal years, in which case the 12 contact hour minimum may be fulfilled as long as some portion of the attendance occurs in the reporting year. A participant that had 10 contact hours in 2017-18 and two contact hours in 1819 
is considered a participant in 2018-19 as long as the 10 hours from 1718 and the 2 hours from 1819 occur within a single pop. However, only the adult education activity covered by the 2 hours in 1819 will, re will be reported in connection with the participant in 1819. Participants and their activities are reported on all NRS tables, except Table 2A. In addition, participants and their activities are reported on both the SPR and the MSG report. In Virginia, a reportable individual is defined as an individual who has completed the required fields on an ASPD. Once the individual accumulates 12 or more contact hours and has a pop, he or she becomes a participant. Some things to keep in mind about reportable individuals. A student who's rolled forward from a previous year is a reportable individual. Even if that student was a participant in the preceding year and his or her last date of attendance is not yet an exit date, the student is still a reportable individual. Once attendant, attendance is entered for the student in the current year, and as long as the student has a valid assessment, the student's status will change from reportable individual to participant. As mentioned in the previous slide, an ASPD is considered complete when all required information is provided on the form and in SSWS. All adult education and literacy services should be reported in SSWS for all individuals, whether they are reportable individuals or participants. Reportable individuals may demonstrate EFL gains, earn secondary and post-secondary credentials, and gain employment. However, these activities will not be included on participant-based NRS tables until the reportable individual becomes a participant. Reportable individuals are reported on NRS Table 2A only. This slide contains a snapshot of state-level data reported on NRS Table 1, submitted as part of the state's annual reporting for 2018-19. As you can see, the table aggregates participant race, ethnicity, and gender information according to EFL or Educational Functioning Level. While NRS Table 1 provides enrollment information based on race, ethnicity, gender, and entering EFL, there is information you should be aware of that will help you understand how the numbers are provided. Participant placement in EFL is based on the participant's entry EFL for the fiscal year. A participant's EFL at the end of the preceding year becomes his or her entry EFL. If a participant is new to adult education or was last in an adult education program two fiscal years ago or more, the participant must take a pretest, and the subject with the lowest EFL becomes the participant's entry EFL for NRS Table 1 placement. Totals reported by gender, race, and ethnicity are based on the information reported by the participant at the time of program entry for the fiscal year. If a participant's gender, race, or ethnicity changes during the course of a year, all adult education activity for that participant is reported according to the characteristics identified at the beginning of the year. NRS Table 1 does not include performance reporting. This slide contains a snapshot of state-level data reported on NRS Table 2 submitted as part of the state's annual reporting for 2018-19. Unlike NRS Table 1, this aggregates participant race, ethnicity, and gender information according to age instead of entering EFL. Considerations for calculating the totals on NRS Table 2 are similar to those for calculating totals on NRS Table 1, except instead of aggregating gender, race, and ethnicity information by EFL, the information is aggregated by age range. Age is based on the participant's age at the time of program entry for the fiscal year. Here are some questions you may want to ask about your region's participants. This slide contains a snapshot of state-level data reported on NRS Table 2A, which is new for 2018-19. An interesting point to note is that the number of reportable individuals statewide 
is approximately 30% of the number of participants reported last year. The table layout for NRS Table 2 and Table 2A is the same. The difference is that Table 2 represents participant information, whereas Table 2A represents information for reportable individuals who are not participants. Here are some questions about NRS Table 2A for you to consider about your region's reportable individual population. Here is the state NRS Table 3, which gives a breakdown of Virginia's adult education participant population by program type according to age. Because IELCE is now included as a WIOA program, an IELCE program type has been added to the list of program types. Also, because IET is identified as a priority in WIOA, states are required to report the IET enrollment for each program type as a subtotal of that program type. Similar to the other tables, NRS Table 3 does not include performance reporting and age is based on the participant's age at the time of program entry. Program type was based on what each program reported for their participants. A number of programs indicated that some participants are supported with funds from more than one program type. However, states were instructed to report one program type only for each participant. In cases where more than one program type could be reported for a participant, the decision is left to programs to select the program type. Here are some questions about NRS Table 3 for you to consider about your region's participants. This slide contains NRS Table 6 for the state. The table provides three types of information about each region's participants. In the top section of NRS Table 6, the employment status of all participants is provided. The employment status is based on information disclosed by the participant on the ASPD. If you're looking at your program's NRS tables, you will notice that the total number of participants for this section is the same as the total number of participants on NRS tables 1, 2, and 3. In the middle section of NRS Table 6, the highest degree or highest level of school completed by participants is provided. Just as with employment status, the highest educational level information is based on information reported on the ASPD. It's interesting to note the number of participants who enter our adult education programs having already earned a post-secondary credential outside of the United States. In the last section of NRS Table 6, enrollment data and secondary program types are provided. The term secondary program types is not connected with secondary school diplomas or credentials. Instead, it refers to program types other than ABE, ASE, ELA, and IELCE. As you can see, secondary program types include family literacy and workplace adult education programs, as well as the three program types covered by C&I funding. Specifically, these are programs in correctional facilities, community correctional programs, and other institutional settings. As mentioned earlier, the data reported for both the employment status and educational level sections of NRS Table 6 are based on self-reported information. If a participant's information changes during the year, programs must not update this information in SSWS. For example, if a participant identifies as unemployed at the time of intake, but later in the year gets a job, Programs should not update the participant's employment status, nor should the employment status initially recorded on the ASPD be changed to reflect the updated status. With respect to the secondary program types, these fields are linked to the student demographics page for each participant. This page is maintained by each program. If a student enrolls in a family literacy program, the appropriate box should be checked on the ASPD and the data entered in SSWS. Once the data is in SSWS, the system will automatically populate NRS Table 6 with this information. Even if a student drops out of a family literacy program, the information should remain both on the ASPD and in SSWS for the remainder of the fiscal year. Here are some questions for you to consider about NRS Table 6. 
This slide contains state-level data for NRS Table 7, which reports information about adult education staff throughout the state. NRS Table 7 reports three items. One, the number of staff based on job function, such as teacher, counselor, local administrator, etc. Two, the number of teachers by years of experience. Because states have not received specific rules for what constitutes a year of experience, interpretation is left to each program to determine criteria for this field. Three, the number of teacher certifications by certification type. Here also, states have received little guidance for collecting this information. Because NRS Table 7 is a non-performance-based report, states do not receive any recognition for having a high number of adult educator certifications. For staff to be included in NRS Table 7, programs must make sure that the staff person has a current employment history in SSWS. This concludes the descriptions of tables 1, 2, 2A, 3, 6, and 7. The next three slides contain questions for use as a self-check. Which NRS tables report educational gains for reportable individuals? The answer is A. None of the tables report educational gains for reportable individuals. Which NRS tables report staff information? The answer is D. NRS Table 7. True or false? One can determine a region's total participant enrollment from NRS Tables 1, 2, 3, or 6. The answer is true. The Resource Center has provided access to its Blackboard site for folks to ask questions and discuss their responses to the discussion questions provided in this tutorial. Thank you for taking the time to participate in this tutorial.